What's up, you guys? No, we are not packing up and heading off on another trip. You guys, the time has come. Daniel and I finally sat down, took the time to make a what's in our bag video for all of you. You guys, this probably has to be one of our number one asked questions. What is in our camera bags? What's our camera gear? What do we carry with us? So many different forms of that question. It's all the same. And guess what? <laughs> we answered all of them today. You guys probably recognize these bags here. They've been with us for a very long time to a lot of different countries. As Chelsea said, we're gonna show you everything that is inside of them, what we packed around on our backs for a very long time now. Definitely get down in the description. We have linked every piece of gear that we are talking about as well as where to find it in this video. And also comment, you guys, if you have any questions about the gear we're using, how we use it, what a good alternative would be, comment down below. We'd love to go through and respond to each of you guys. Strap in, get excited, it's a good one. We got tons of gear to go over with you guys and we can't wait, let's get started. Isn't she beautiful? You guys, she's a little dirty, okay? She's been through a lot. I actually don't know how to clean this. I'm gonna be quite honest with everybody, okay? I've tried very little to scrub, but I like it. It's battle scars. This is the Wandered Provoke 31 liter pack, and I love it. And this is like the sand color. I actually think this was a limited edition. I'm very sorry. I don't think they have this exact color anymore. We will link a bag in a very similar color. It's kind of more of a creamy color. It's very beautiful. Love it, love it. Here's my bag. Same exact bag that Shell has. This thing is awesome. It is so rugged, so tough. It's pretty waterproof. It also has a big rain fly you could put over it. We use that a lot on Kilimanjaro and riding motorcycles throughout all sorts of countries. Came in super handy. Mine is definitely full. Shell's is very full and I would argue hers was even heavier than mine half the time, mainly because of the treats she had in the roll top. But I swear, I have way more gear than her, so sit tight. There's a lot of stuff to go through and it is going to be well worth it because We've been using gear for a long time, you guys, and I think we've kind of weeded out what we like, what we don't like. So, here we go. First off, this bag. This bag is incredible. It's been with us forever. I hope it will be with us for a very, very long time. It is the perfect size, you guys. It is a big bag for sure, but you know what? You kind of have to have a lot of equipment when you do what we do, and it comes in so handy. If you just wanted a smaller day pack or something, you might go with the 21 liter, but we found the 31 liter to be just perfect for what we're doing. Let's open her up. You guys, this thing is freaky heavy. We got a lot of gear in here all the time. Here she is. Aww. It's so not pretty. <laughs> oh, Gooey just bark. First and foremost, obviously my camera, okay? This is my best friend, always on me. I don't actually ever take it out of this pocket. I always take it out of this side pocket right here. Little side entry. For the video purposes, we're taking it out of the top pocket, okay? Here she is, she's beautiful. Canon R5, love it. Right on my camera right now, I have the Canon 24 to 70 lens. She's beautiful, I love her. I will say, when we were traveling for eight months, this lens very rarely left my camera. This was pretty much my all around go-to lens during our travels, used it pretty much the whole time, unless I was putting on like our monster zoomy. Daniel and I have four RF lenses that we kind of share between us because we both have the exact same camera. So we kind of play a little bit of a lens swap game, but truthfully, we kind of have our favorites that basically never leave our cameras. This is one of mine. <laughs> Shell and I definitely have a little bit of redundant equipment. We both use the Canon R5. Absolutely phenomenal camera body. I would say if you're getting into photography, you don't need the Canon R5. Canon has a ton of mirrorless bodies now. The line is expanding so fast. They, I swear, have a model for every different type of photographer, videographer, person. Go check out that line, see what works for you. They definitely have some cheaper models that are probably perfect. I will say the best camera for us may not be the best camera for you. Honestly, any mirrorless camera across any brand that you can get will be the best camera for you. We're loving this one though. Now my lens of choice, you guys, is the Canon RF 15 to 35. It has a nice wide angle. A lot of the time, you know, we are holding the camera right in front of our faces as well as shooting outward. This is kind of close quarters. So with the 15 millimeter lens, you guys, you get a nice shot of us. It's not just full of our face. You can kind of see what's around us. I love it. That thing hardly leaves my camera body. This camera strap, you guys, 
because I get so many questions on my camera strap and I would love to have you all go buy it, but I got this literally like six years ago. It is so worn, as you can see. I actually have had to re-sew it like three times because I love it so much. I just got it off of Etsy. I will see if I can find a link, but I really don't know if I'll be able to find a link because it's so old and it's so beat up, but I love it so much. I cannot get rid of it. It's like sentimental to me now. Next up, we have another favorite. We don't get to use this one all the time, but when we do get to use it, it is indispensable. It's a must have in your bag. This is the Canon RF 70 to 200. So guys, the bigger the number, the bigger the zoom. This thing has a 200 millimeter zoom and it is so good when we go out looking for wildlife. We had it on safari in the Serengeti. My God. We took it to scout out monkeys in Bali in Japan. Obviously, it's kind of hard to get close to these things sometimes. So with the nice 200 millimeter zoom, you can get right up in there and get the most beautiful 4K shots. This thing was awesome. This one also is the F4. They make this in an F2.8, meaning it has a bigger aperture, a little bit more depth, a little bit better in low light, but it's $1,000 more expensive and it weighs, I swear, twice as much. This one does not weigh much at all. So this has served us very well. Usually lives in my bag right here. Next up, I have my flash. I don't even think this is a nice flash. I got this flash so long ago. It's linked on our Amazon storefront. I actually really love it. The only thing I will say I don't love about this is you have to like change out the batteries, you know? It doesn't have a rechargeable battery, but that's okay. I still love the flash. It's trusty. It's never let me down, knock on wood. I don't carry this with me always. I only carry this in situations where I know ahead of time that I'm going to need a flash. I did not take this with us during our eight months travel time period. I did not want to carry the weight. It's kind of big and bulky and it's heavy and I just didn't want to carry it. I have the little attachment here. Let me show you how this thing works. This is just like basically my diffuser that I use on the flash. I have other ones, but this one is actually my favorite. This is the brand. Again, linked on our Amazon storefront, all of this. And this is magnetic and it just sticks on there like that. And it's just great. Get crazy guys, get crazy with your flash. Okay, it's great. There we are. Moving on. <laughs> you know we have a drone. We got the DJI Mavic 3. This thing is amazing. Now the Mavic 3 may not be the drone for you. It's obviously a fantastic drone. It's one of their higher end drones. And what I love about it is it's a pretty powerful drone. We've got Daniel flying the drone here. The wind is a little bit insane. This thing flew in some gnarly winds in Iceland, survived some very aggressive seagulls in Portugal. It has been an amazing drone for us, but it is definitely on the bigger side, on the heavier side. For me, it's worth it to pack it around just because of what it can do for me. But DJI also makes some very compact drones. Their line of mini drones are very, very good. Great quality, so much smaller and lighter weight. Probably will be a better option for most people. And I wouldn't say that I wouldn't mind having one myself, but that's what we're using right now. We also have extra batteries, of course. These are heavy, but you gotta have them. We got the remote right here, living in my pack most of the time. Next up, my speaker. This thing is always with me. This is always in my bag. If it's not in here, it's in the roll top, it's in the cup holder. Actually, usually there's a water bottle in the cup holder. I take this on every single photo shoot. I took this with us during all of our travels. This speaker is always with us. Yes, it's a little bit big. Yes, it's a little bit heavy, but I love it. Daniel and I sleep with some sort of fan or white noise every single night. So every night while we were traveling, we would just play it through this so it didn't kill the speaker on our cell phones because that has happened before to my old phones. And this was a lifesaver. It sounds so freaking good. JBL, linked on our Amazon storefront. It's awesome. Thank you, Daniel. I'm pretty sure he got this for me for like a birthday or Christmas or something. Sometimes you can't take a drone into specific countries. We were not able to take our drone into Egypt or Qatar, and there's other countries out there where they just do not allow drones. So in that case, I carry around a 360 camera. This is the Insta360 X3. It's a great little camera. You put this on the end of a long pole, and you can get perspectives that are very similar to a drone when you aren't able to have a drone. This is probably my favorite piece of equipment that I own. <laughs> besides my actual camera body. You guys, this is the Canon RF 50 millimeter lens. This thing is so beautiful. It is my favorite lens that I have ever shot with ever, 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 ever. This is an F1.2, which means you can get mad depth with this thing. It's so good in low light. It is just like the most beautiful, buttery, perfect, sharp, oh, 
lens ever. The only flaw, obviously, is that it is a prime lens at 50 millimeter, so it doesn't give you a lot of variety in range. You have to move a lot when you're shooting with this lens, but that doesn't stop me. This is literally my favorite lens ever. A couple other things I keep in here are hard drives. I have a bunch of external hard drives, solid state ones for when we're out filming and I have to store a ton of data. I got some earbuds here. I try to keep them small because I already have enough stuff in this bag. Up here in the roll top, this is just kind of like, what would you call this? Tech pouch thing? Just random things in here. I've got hard drives, cables, headphones, whatever these are called, power block things. This is my little card reader adapter. You know, all the random techy things, cords. I'm sure there's things in here that I don't even need that just never leave this bag. This is Wandered, I believe. Love it, it's great. I have my GoPro Hero 10, absolute must. You'd need a GoPro when you're out traveling. The 11 is out now. I'm still using the 10, which is great because now the 11 is out, you can go and get the 10 for a little bit cheaper. So definitely look into that. This thing is also great. One drawback with the GoPro is you don't get great audio. This is a little cage that goes around the GoPro and has a built-in microphone and it actually works really, really well. We've used this on the back of Harleys all over the place when we didn't have the full camera out and it captured the audio really, really well. This has been so sick, all the scooters weaving around me. And it's no longer waterproof per se when you use this cage, but you get fantastic audio right off of your GoPro. That I think is a must have. Back here I have, oh look, there you go. Provoke, 31 liter. My laptop, this is a beast, love it. It's so dirty. <laughs> Maybe I should have washed it. It's very heavy. This actually has two little pouches, which I love. I usually have a journal in this one. That's what I took with me when we traveled. And did I write in it every night? No, absolutely not, okay? I did not. I wish I did, but I didn't. But I did write in it sometimes, so I was happy that I had it. I got pens up here all the time. These little pockets are just full of SD cards. We've got cough drops in this one. I didn't even know those were in there. <laughs> We've got some wet wipes and feminine products in this one. We also have the Loom Cube panel. We film in the night a lot and it helps to have a little bit of light on your face when you're filming, just so you guys can actually see what we're putting our camera at. I love this thing. I mount it up on my camera with my microphone quite frequently after the sun goes down. Moving on to the roll top. This thing is great. My roll top is big and I love it and I feel it. This thing gets so big. <laughs> And this is honestly, most of the time, filled with food. <laughs> Snacks on the plane, things like that. Anything that I can't fit back here goes up here. Clothes, like whatever, I will shove in this roll top and it goes huge. I mean, literally it can be that big. Like this thing is incredible. Love it. Over here, I just have a ton of batteries. Tons and tons of batteries. They're just great. They just keep coming. It's like Mary Poppins. You will never find me without carabiners on my bag. I actually have them on both sides. This one's kind of wimpy. But I hook my hats to it. I hook my speaker to it. Really anything. I love it. Super easy way for me to carry my hats around. Up here, we just have a huge zipper that is full of all sorts of random stuff. External batteries, lotions, miscellaneous items. And that's my bag, everybody. Last but not least, we have my microphone. This is the windsock that I put over my microphone, blocks all the sound out. We use the VideoMic Pro Plus, fantastic microphone for everything. Similar to Shell, I have quite the bank of batteries right here in this pocket. A lot of the time we weren't able to charge for a couple days at a time. So I've got five batteries across this right here. And then same as Shell, always packing around the laptop with me. Obviously not every day. We'll leave this in the hotel room when we're out. Up front, we have that catch-all pocket. Just a massive pocket that you can fill with anything. I've got gum up here. That's a must-have when you're traveling. Extra cables. I have an external battery. This is a must-have. Something's gonna die on you when you need it, whether it's your phone or GoPro batteries or something. I have this with me because I can charge them on the fly when we're out and about. Then we have the roll top, same as shells. This thing holds an absolute ton of stuff. I have this tech pouch from Nomadic. It's really, really rad. and it holds all my charging equipment, my SD card readers, all of that stuff lives in this thing, always protected. <laughs> Last but not least, you guys, I got a selfie stick. This is for a <laughs> GoPro, the Insta360, whatever you will. And it's nice and long. It's got about a meter length on it, three feet. And it's just perfect for when you're diving out and about on a motorcycle. Really, he just likes to take a lot of selfies. <laughs>
I do, I really do. All right, you've seen what's in my bag. Now I wanna get to the two things that I love most about my gear. The first piece of gear, you guys, I honestly don't know how I would have survived without it. We hiked Mount Kilimanjaro, I had my camera with me the entire time, and this made that possible. This is called the Capture Clip by Peak Design. This device just lives right here on your backpack strap, and you have a small plate on the back of your camera, and you could just clip it in there and it just lives safe and sound right on your backpack strap. It's amazing, you guys. I love to not have to hold it in my hands all of the time because I'm not shooting all of the time. And so I could just throw it on there. It's so safe and secure. It locks in position. It doesn't go anywhere. We use this so much while we were out traveling. We still use it today. I use it all the time. Anywhere we go anywhere, my bag has my capture clip on it. It is so amazing. Another big question we got while we were traveling was how do we protect our gear when we are out in the water? We have done many cool things out in the water. One time in Mallorca, we went sea caving and I took my R5 and all of my gear into the cave with us. We've been on tons of boats, we've been in beaches, obviously. We've taken our gear to a lot of crazy places and people always ask, hey, how do you keep your camera equipment dry and how do you protect it while you're out? So let me show you guys. Wandered sells what they call camera camera cubes for all of their bags. They have different sizes. Mine is the Pro Cube. It fills the entire bag, whereas Shell's is the Essentials, and it fills about half of her bag. But the rad part about it is you can actually remove them. The entire protective camera cube comes out and zips up and protects your gear. And you can put it in something else. Shell, my dry bag, please. Thank you, man. This is my GoPro dry bag. If you don't know what a dry bag is, it is a bag that keeps your things dry. <laughs> this one happens to be made by GoPro. I love the size of it, and even better, my Wandered Camera Cube fits just perfectly inside this bag. And you go ahead and roll up the top, clip her shut, all of my gear is perfectly waterproof and protected inside of this bag. This GoPro bag came with us when we traveled for eight months. This thing made it possible for us to take our gear into some very, very sketchy places and film for you guys. It's reversible. <laughs> I forgot to say that. That's it for us, you guys. That is everything that we carry on our soon to be broken bags. No, just kidding. These bags are amazing. We love them. But it's a lot of gear and it's very, very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we hope that video has been informative. We've definitely been asked that a lot. So I think we covered that question in this video. Definitely stay tuned. We do have some fun trips coming up very, very soon that we cannot wait for. And again, you guys, make sure you get down in the description and check check out, we linked everything for you down there and where you can find it in this video. And also ask us any questions. If you have questions about our gear, if you have questions about anything under the sun, get down, comment, let us know your questions. We'd love to respond to each and every one of you. We will see you all in our next video. See you guys. And you just clip it in there.